Good morning, Trinity. Pastor Dave here. I'm just going to share again from the Gospel of Luke, Jesus' life necessities. We're thinking about what's really necessary in this time when we're home, we're, we're stuck in close quarters with one another, or maybe even all alone. And what was it necessary for Jesus to do when he walked the earth? Well, uh, here in, in Luke chapter 15, verse 32, we're going to find uh, one that's perhaps difficult in this season, uh, but one that I hope at the same time will be encouraging. As you're turning your Bible there to Luke 15, 32, you remember the story that Jesus was telling. It's the parable of the prodigal son, and it's one of three stories that he's telling in response to the grumbling of the Pharisees, the religious leaders in Jesus' day, who didn't like the fact that Jesus was dining with, with sinners, with tax collectors, with those that they did not approve of. Jesus was offering grace and truth and presence to these. Well, he tells the, the story of the lost sheep and the story of the lost coin, and now he tells the story of the prodigal son, and, and he's at the end of that story. Now, you remember in that story that he's telling to those Pharisees and to his disciples, but he's really got those Pharisees in mind. There's a younger brother who who goes to his father and says, I want my inheritance now. Now this hurts the father's heart. And the older brother, we don't know how he feels about this at the time, but you might imagine, based upon the way the older brother acts later, how he feels about the younger brother. Well, the younger brother leaves and goes to a faraway country, and he lives prodigally, <laughs> in prodigality, I suppose. He spends all the money his dad gave him, right? So, uh, it's like uh, it's like that song that was out a few years ago. I got my money. Let's spend it all. And he, and he does that. But then he runs out and he finds himself looking for any job he can find. And that means working with pigs, uncleanness in his culture, and not only the uncleanness of being with the pigs and, and working with pigs, these unclean creatures, but then uh, actually eating after them because he was so hungry and desperate for food, and he wakes up and realizes, I could go home and have everything I need, everything I want in the presence of my father. I need to go home, tell him how sorry I am, that I don't deserve to be called his son, and maybe, just maybe, he'll receive me back. Well, when he's finally resolved and come home, and he's just still a long way off, the father is waiting, longingly, and he sees his son coming and runs out to him. And before the son can finish his whole speech, the father robes him with his own robe and, and puts a ring on his finger. He's, he's kissing him with, with fatherly kisses of love after perhaps months, perhaps years apart. And he's rejoicing. Slaughter the fattened calf. Let's throw a party, invite all our friends. Let's celebrate. But then the older brother we find comes home to find a party going on. And when he finds out that it's because of his brother being home, he's livid. He is just upset as can be and he won't come into the party. And so the father, because he loves both sons, he goes out to the older son and says, what's the deal? The older son complains and mopes around, I never got a party. You never slaughtered the fattened calf for me. Sorry to make him sound silly. The story makes him look kind of silly. but And the father just graciously says, you're always with me. And everything that I have is yours. Every day is a celebration for you. You've, you've just got the goodness of, of being in my house. But here's where we come to verse 32. To be glad, to rejoice, it's necessary. That's what the Father says according to Jesus. It's necessary to be glad and to rejoice because this, your brother, was dead and is alive. He was lost and is found. It's necessary. It's necessary. If you remember that Greek word, dei, it's necessary to celebrate, to rejoice, to be glad. 
when anyone comes to the Lord, no matter who they are. And so in this time of of COVID-19 concerns, one thing that I want to encourage you is that God is on the move. God is drawing people to himself. And God may draw people in this season to himself that you may not want him to draw into your church. You may not, not want him to draw them to your living room. But in his grace, just like he drew you and me and has kept us in his presence, making all that is his ours, the kingdom of heaven is ours, or in spirit. But for us, we need to remember that the Lord is drawing to himself all of these, and that should give us cause to rejoice, just like the angels in heaven when one lost sheep is found and returned to God's flock, just like a a woman over a lost coin And the angels in heaven rejoice over one lost sinner coming home to God and repenting. We join in that heavenly praise, that party, whenever someone comes to Christ. So we need to remember that. And for someone who maybe is considering Christ or has been separated from the people of God for some time and you're concerned about receiving uh, a cold welcome from a bunch of older brothers, my prayer is that the people of God would be mentored by Jesus. They'd be mentored by this very story that Jesus told us to tell us what the kingdom of God is like. It's like a party where it's necessary to rejoice because God is drawing people by his grace and rescuing them from sin and Satan and death and hell so that they can be in his presence forever. So I hope that you will rejoice at least a little in your heart today, even in the midst of the anxieties, because God is on the move. And be praying. Let your children join you in prayer. Pray that God would use this time to draw many to himself. It is necessary to rejoice when God finds lost sinners and brings them home. God bless you guys.